Teresa, uh, Kitten Stitcher, a.k.a. Kitten Stitcher, a.k.a. Shakespeare's Peddler, a.k.a. Raconteur. I don't even really know what that means. I'm uh, trying a Stitch With Me video. I've never done these before. I've kind of wanted to do one because I figure, like, I kind of like watching Stitch With Me videos. But um, one of the things I, it's not, that's not my favorite about them sometimes is that you're just looking at the stitching all the time. And um, I wanted to create kind of a more like you came over to visit kind of a vibe going on. And you can kind of see what the cats are up to. When I'm stitching, this gets to be cat central right here. Everybody wants to be chilling with Teresa. And so um, even grumpy. <laughs> you want to get on my lap? So I'm still in my PJs. And it's Sunday morning and I thought that I would just shoot a video. So welcome. I got my Tony the Tiger, I don't know, Gap cheap t-shirt on my comfy sleep shirt. And um, what I'm working on right now, and I may switch here, I pulled out another one, but I'm working on uh, Kathy Barrick's Village of Hawk Run Hollow. And I finished that square. So that square is done. I'm stitching this on Exude Designs um, Grandpa's sleeve. It's a 40 count linen. And it pretty much is gonna take up the whole quarter yard of fabric. So it's three across and four down. And um, here, I'll show you what it's going to look like. Oh, 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 oh. This is what I'm telling you. This is the kind of kind of live, unedited peaches. Seriously. Okay. So, this was a piece I've wanted to stitch for a long time. I started it during Stitch Mania, and it's really, really fun to stitch. Here's what it's going to look like when it's done. And I've got that for sale in my shop. It's still being printed. The um, bottom corner here, I may change um, because I feel like it's too dark. So I don't know what it's gonna be yet. I may just take the dark background out. I'm not sure. I don't mind doing full coverage. It looks really pretty, but it just is kind of a heavy corner. I think it's smart that she put it in the bottom corner because I think like heavy elements like that should they kind of weight the picture. And if you put it at the top, it makes the picture seem top heavy. Um, so I'm using my cheaters. If you have watched my videos, you may have heard that I um, got prescription cheaters this year. I really like them. And um, my optometrist said that it's smart to get prescription readers because um, they're really built for your eyes and where you're looking through is formulated right for where, I don't know, I guess your pupils are or something. And so I respect that. I can, I can get that, I can get along with that. And so right now I'm gonna stitch a little bit of the box with um, this piece, it calls for a ton. Let me see if I, if I can even see how many. I seem to remember it's like, yeah, holy crap, Ola. Oh my gosh, okay, so two, these are floss, these are silks and these are silks. So that's how long the silks list is for that. I have some of them. I don't have all of them. So what I'm doing if I don't have them is I'm, um, oh, am I starting a thread? I don't want to pull it all the way through. If I don't have a color, I'm pulling out the DMC conversion that she lists and then just kind of matching to see what I have that might be close, even if it's in another thread line. As it so happens, the color that she used for the boxes that go around each piece uh, are, I didn't have that color. And I had a skein of Thread Gatherer Cinnamon Stick, which is a really pretty rusty orange. And so that's what I'm using to go around the edges. I really like, uh, if I'm doing a sampler like this, I like to have a couple of threads where it's a, <clears throat> it's a variegated, even if it's just lightly a variegated thread. I, I like threads that don't radically change color. I like just kind of subtle variations because if you look at a lot of old samplers, the real deal, the variegation is there, but it's subtle. You know, the threads kind of fade unevenly and I like that. I like the way it looks, but I sometimes I feel like if you use nothing but variegated threads in a sampler like this, it ends up looking kind of stripy and that's not my favorite thing, but so Kathy's such a talented designer and um, her pieces are really fun to stitch. Her colors are so pretty. Zero, you wanna sit on my lap? 
Yeah, come on. I don't even really need this. I'm just stitching a square. Um, so I got, I have the Galleria show is coming up and it's in, um, you know, near St. Louis, St. Charles. And I'm super excited about that. I used to go to that show, um, Old Colonial Designs hosted it for a few years and it was always really, really fun. I remember one year, God, I wish I could remember the name of the company. I come across it from time. Oh, I bet I can. Hang on. Hang on, hang on. I have it stuck to my mirror. Okay, cool. Nifty Thrifty Dry Goods. She had the coolest, and I think she used to have a store maybe, or she went and did trade shows. She was like the queen of like trims and buttons and old like, you know, finishing fixings. And I don't know where she found them all, but um, she had the cutest packaging and she went one year and the, the whole booth was filled she, I really wish, I don't know that she's in business anymore. I don't know what happened to her, but she used to be Nifty Thrifty Dry Goods. And so like this is a pack of buttons that I bought. They're made out of bone and they almost, I mean, to me, they remind me of Jack Skellington. They've got, they're, all those dots you see are holes. Gosh, they're cool. But she would put packaging together like that for all these little sets of buttons. So like this set here was $6 for these bone antique buttons that she put in this cute packaging. These were a splurge. There are 13 of them. It looks like I paid $24 for them, but they're crocheted buttons. And I've never used them because I just think they're so cute. So I actually have tape on the back and I have them stuck to my mirror right here to the side. And um, that way I get to kind of enjoy them, look at them. And I just, I just loved the packaging, but she had just ribbons and trims and, you know, just lots of little, ugh, lots of little cool stuff. And man, you could have spent a fortune in there. But anyway, there's going to be, it's set up at a, an Embassy Suites. And an Embassy Suites is a uh, hotel chain here in North America. I don't know if they've got them other places too, but the way it's set up is the interior the hotel, the inside of the hotel is set up almost like a donut where the, the hole of the donut is a, like a, you know, typically like their, their restaurant, some pools and trees and, you know, gathering spaces and things. And then that hole continues all the way up. And then the rooms go around that hole. So if you stand in the hole at the bottom, you can look all the way up to the, the ceiling of the, the highest most floor. And then you can stand on the railings and see people on other floors coming and going and it's a really cool place to have a show like that because you can see the people shopping you can people hang signs out for their booths and that's typically Nashville market not typically it actually is every time Nashville market is at an embassy suites and then designers and and um, you know like the distributors and the fabric dyers and the thread dyers a lot of them will throw signs out that hang over the banisters and it's just a fun time. It just really creates excitement. Now I've heard that they're expecting about 400 people and that was like as of maybe two months ago. So it's gonna be a huge show. And you know, it's super fun to get, it's super fun to get together with Stitching Friends if, you, if you're if you lucky enough to have them. I'm, I'm lucky enough that I've got, you know, a few people here, you know, Jen and her sisters and, um, Lisha and others that we we get together and then Jen I, I get together with at least once a week to talk stitching or actually stitch or whatever and so if you multiply that times 400 you can imagine how much fun that is because it's like um, it's just you it creates euphoria like stitching euphoria that's what they should call it the stitching euphoria show and uh, let me make sure this is recording. I haven't done this before, so I just wanna, oh, oh yeah, okay, we're good, we're good. So I'm very excited about that. It's the weekend of September 19th to the 22nd. We're gonna leave that, I don't remember, it was Tuesday, I think, and drive part way and then drive the rest of the way on Wednesday because we can check in at three. The show, do you wanna sit on my lap? Here, come sit here, come sit here, come sit right by me. Show people your pretty face. There you go. There you go. Yeah. 
Um, it's, so we can check in at three. Oh, I'm sorry, did I bump you in the face? And I'm taking my son Graham with me and he's actually pretty excited about it. Graham is 21 and he is such a sweet young man. He said he is actually really excited about it. He likes to sell things to people. So he was like, what are we gonna, what are we really gonna focus on? So we're kind of making some plans. And um, they're gonna have classes at the, at the show. I know they're gonna have stitching time and then there's gonna be one floor of exhibitors. I should have looked at the list. I'll post a link <clears throat> in the comments to this video so that you can see who all is going to be there. They have a complete list. <clears throat> Shows like this are fun because it, you know, when you go to market, it's all, you know, the kind of wholesale. But this one, the, some of the some shops are coming too, and so they're setting up shop. I know Lindy from the Silver Needle will be there. Uh, Nikki from Nikki's Creations will be there. And man, that's where I would hit first because Nikki always brings some things that she made, like little pin cushions and little needle books and things. And they're so pretty and they sell out super fast. So it'll be fun to see Nikki. She's very, very sweet. And um, Michelle from Michelle Inc. is going to be there. It's funny, I contacted her hi, recently to see if I could take some of her things to the show. She makes really cool <clears throat> silver charms, needle minders, rings, like jewelry and things. And the silver that she uses is reclaimed. And I, I think she said it's like reclaimed silver from like electronics and other consumer uses of silver where it's, it's pulled out of that old use and then she buys it and it's recycled, which I think is really, really cool. And then she's just such an artist. Um, I've got a few of her things that I've bought, like charms and buttons and things. And I need to like pull one out and get an idea and, and do some finishing with one of them. Because they're so, so pretty. So Michelle Inc's going to be there. But I had contacted her to say, hey, I'd love to take your stuff to the show. She said, I'm going to be at the show. So I said, well, great. I'll come and buy some stuff. And um, I'm trying to think who else is coming. I should have looked at the list. I'll put it. I'll put it down below so you can look and see. I, I don't, not sure if there's time to still sign up. I'm sure a lot of the classes probably are full, but it's worth checking out if you're going to be not doing anything and you want to stop by St. Louis for the weekend in September. Uh, it's in three weeks. Three weeks from right this minute. It'll be over, I guess. Oof. So I've got a lot to do. I really enjoy doing shows like this um, because, like I said, it kind of creates a euphoria to have so many people interested in stitching there's just so much excitement you can almost it's palpable people just kind of buzz and they're like oh look at that look at this look at this look what I found and everybody runs around and laughs and um, really people are for the most part really super well behaved sometimes you'll get a show where some people are crabby because the forks weren't clean <laughs> in the restaurant or they ran out of iceberg lettuce or the elevator got stuck or something, people get kind of cranky, but really it's just a joy to be with um, kind, creative, sweet people who like to do what we do. And I think we're not all the same, obviously. We're different people. So, uh, but it's fun to just celebrate that thing that we all have in common, which is a love for needlework. And I love to see the, I know, I know. I love to see what people are looking are working on too. It's fun to see projects and I'm going to be, well, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to get to shop really because I'm going to have Graham there with me. I suppose if it gets quiet and he figures out, we figure out what we're doing, I might be able to leave here and there because I would love to go, go around and chat, chit chat and um, buy a few things. We'll see how it goes, but um, it'll be nice for us to spend time together. It'll be, we'll be together for about a week. And so we'll get to eat out together and really get to spend some quality time. He moved out earlier this year and he's doing a great job. He just had to switch because he was working at Papa Murphy's and they closed, unfortunately. The corporate fees were getting too expensive and then the rent went up astronomically. And so the owner said, you know what, I'm just done. And he was retired anyway, so he didn't, didn't need to be doing that. 
so the, the types of things that I'm going to be doing for the next two weeks is just really getting ready for this show. I have to price everything, put price tags on everything. I, the inventory that I sell online is not, I don't put price tags on it because I put it on the website, it sells and I send it and there's no reason for you to need to know how much you paid. It, you, you get an invoice. But now for the show, everything will have to be priced. So starting this week, I'll probably do like a box at a time, sit down and knock it out, put, put um, price labels on things. I know. And I'm starting to get some things in that it's like, you know what, I'm not even going to put this up on the website. It's just going to go to the show with a, with a label on it. And um, what else do I need to do? I need to kind of think about what I'm taking for my display. I try to make it look like a cozy little <laughs> cool shop. So I take a lot of like my bo my boxes and crates and my mirror and lights and you know coverings for the tables and I kind of go for that kind of shabby chic farmhousey beat up grungy vintage thrift store vibe. Um, one of the things you cannot do with these shows is hang things on the wall with nails. You obviously don't want to get hit with a big uh, room fixing fee. So, um, I'm going to take my 3M strips. You know, uh, 3M makes these, what do they call them, command strips. And they're really cool because you can put them on the back of your piece, and it's almost like double sticking your picture to the wall. And they have different strengths, you know, based on how much your, your item weighs. But they're great because you can take them to the show, and even though it's wallpaper, they still stick to it. And when you pull them off, there is nary a trace of what you did. It just comes right off, no problem at all. And so I try to take as many models as I, I can too. I made a list, but I think I'm gonna restart over of what all I'm gonna take. I'm gonna go to Jen's and she said she'd let me borrow some pieces if I want. So I'm kind of trying to focus on probably like mostly fall pieces and some Christmas. And then samplers, obviously, since it's a fall show. That'll be kind of the vibe going on. And the cool thing is like, um, there's a whole bunch of prairie schoolers that I wouldn't have been able to take a few years ago, but now they're reprinted. And so I can actually take those in the room, which will be really neat. And so I hang them just like I do here in the, in the hitching post, where I just put as many pictures on the wall as I can and just hang everything up. So I'm still ordering things to, to, um, to take to the show. I ordered like 60 yards of linen from Picture This Plus, and I've got linen on order in other places, and I've been kind of hoarding linen here and dyeing it. I'm trying to take a lot of fabric because I feel like fabric is one of those things that it's hard to shop for online. You, you know, you, you, may, you might know like a pattern might call for a certain fabric or you might have a favorite fabric that you're like, yeah, yeah, I'll just get more of that. But seeing fabric in person and touching it and smelling it and looking at it is really different in person. And I feel like a lot of people that come to the show aren't going to have a local store. So it'll be really nice for them to see the linens and pick out exactly what they want. I was trying to think of like, how am I going to, how am I going to do the linens you know, sell them. Um, the picture of this plus linens when I order them come in one yard cuts. She'll dye a whole yard at once. And so I'm thinking I'm going to divide those up each hi, into quarters, two quarters and one half. And then I don't, I haven't decided yet how I'm going to bundle them. One year I made rolls where I took a piece of fabric here. I've got fabric right here. Sorry, Ruby, I scare you. So here's, this is some of my hand dyed linen. And what I did um, is I folded it a certain way and then I rolled it. Oh, maybe I started, I, well, I'm just gonna roll it and show you. So I rolled it and I may do this again. I don't know, it's kind of, it makes a really cute display. I rolled it like that, I did a better job, and then tied like twine around it with a with a label of what it was, and you can, and then I stacked it so it was like pyramids of fabric and people could just dig through and it was really fun. 
but I don't know if I'll do that this time. I may do it a little differently. That's pretty. It smells good too. So I got to come up with a way to display that. It's, I feel like going to these markets for me is like Thanksgiving dinner because it, it's, gosh, it's just like Thanksgiving dinner, except there's fewer sweet potatoes. Are you so happy? Um, Thanksgiving dinner is one of those things I love to do and it takes a lot of preparation, right? So you, I've got it so I can pretty much do it in my mind or I might make a small list of what I need. But I go to the grocery store and I kind of know what I want and I, you have to get everything. And eventually you're like, oh, dang it, I forgot whatever, sage. So, and then you end up having to go back. And so there's a lot of preparation and then the preparation starts earlier, right? So you're making pumpkin pies maybe the day before. I usually make two pumpkin pies and an apple pie. And I make um, turkey, obviously. So um, a lot of times I buy a frozen turkey. I usually get the honeysuckle ones. I've been real happy with those. But you have to make sure that that's all the way thought out. And, you know, there's just kind of a lot of running and prepping to do. You chill. If you get a bottle of wine, you might have to chill that ahead of time. Stuff you have to do ahead. And then the morning of, you get up and you just start. And you have to know, like, what order do I need to do things in in order to get this whole meal accomplished? And so it's the same with these shows where there's a ton of prep work. And some of it's in here and some of it I have to write down. But you're like, okay. And it's things like I got to, you know, make sure I order enough bags for people to take their merchandise in. Um, I need to get some kind of an invoicing system set up. I have to get change from the bank. I have to print charts. I have to get the models ready to go and make sure I have charts for every single model that goes. And it's just lots. I have to have pens. I take Sharpies. I take tape. I take a stapler. So there's just all this stuff that you, you're thinking about, thinking about, thinking about, and you get it all together. And inevitably, I'm pretty good at Thanksgiving dinner. Inevitably at a show, there will be one thing I forgot. And a couple years in a row, it was bags. I just I totally forgot bags. And Cecile at... Just another button company always bailed me out and gave me bags. But I try not to, I try to encourage people to use their own bags if they can. So if they've got like a tote, you know, I say, would you like a bag? And a lot of times they're like, no, I'll just throw it in with what I've got. And that saves, you know, a little bit of wear and tear on the environment. I don't mind giving a bag out. I try to get cute bags when I get them. I've got some already from the last show, but I need to get some, some other sizes. Um, you got to take treats for everybody and um, little nicenesses. I always have to get some clothes. <laughs> I'm just not, I don't like shopping for clothes. I don't like shopping for clothes. So I always have to get some new clothes because my clothes are always just ratty. I wear the same thing over and over again. It's nice working at home because um, I can do that. I, I, uh, have been getting rid of a lot of my clothes lately. Um, things that I used to wear uh, at my job at the bookstore because it's just like, ugh. I used to get yelled at in this shirt all the time. So just clothes with bad memories. I, I take them to the thrift store and people can get some use out of them. But So anyway, there's just lots of little pieces to do. And it's... um. The, when you come home after a show like this, you get so jazzed about needlework because you just you're just immersed in it for five days or whatever. And the show setup always takes longer than the takedown because um, I mean you're carrying things either way, but you always carry more in than you leave with because you sell a lot of your things. And then I have to be careful because one show. I actually did like your, what is this, your rotator cuff? I did something to my rotator cuff. And uh, you know, you get older and you think I can keep doing things the way I used to do them. I used to do market, you know, when I was in my 30s, I'd go to Nashville Needlework Market and I'd use the stairs to go between floors and I would take them two at a time and um, run around like a crazy woman, but I can't do that anymore. My body's gonna get angry. Zero, are you so sweet? He's so sweet. And um, really the fun thing about this market, I feel, is going to be that it's going to feel like old markets. The Nashville show, which is the one that shops can go to, it's typically the last, 
like the last part of February or the first part of March. And it's a, it's a wholesale show. So you can go if you're a designer. So if you're a designer, you actually can attend the show. And if you have a shop, you can attend the show. And, and if you have, you know, if you're in the needlework industry in some way, you can attend the show. But it's gotten smaller and smaller every year because there used to be a lot more shops than there are now. I know like in Minneapolis, Minnesota, at one time there were like 10 needlework stores, which is insanity. It's mind blowing to think, <laughs> think of 10 stores and uh, cross stitch stores in one city. And now I think there's, there's just Stitchville is all that's left. And so um, National Needlework Market used to be just so... I know, he's so happy this morning. Nashville Needlework Market used to just be so busy, so busy, that you could not find your scissors. It was so busy, you couldn't find your scissors. So um, you used to have to, at some booths, you had to take a number and just stand in the hallway. And you would go into a room, like Bent Creek, I remember, for years was so hot. You just, like, would get to their room, and you could not get in the room. You, there was no room for you to get in the room. And it's not that way anymore. It's, it's pretty, you know, the, the, they'll get 150, I think, or 200 shops that'll come. But then you divide that amongst five floors of shops... And it's like, I don't know, like, let's say, let's say there are 150 vendors there. That's, that gives you an average of one shop per room at all times. And obviously there are going to be congregations in some rooms and some rooms will be empty, you know, as people mill around. So it just doesn't have that frantic vibe anymore that it used to have. And I, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that, that it was crazy busy and I enjoyed that and some shops didn't like it because they're like, it was so many shops that designers and distributors would bring things and then run out. And it still happens sometimes and people get kind of PO'd. But I always just said, hey, you know, that's how it goes. You you miss miss out on some things and some things you get. And that's that's life. That's how it goes. But this, is, this Galleria show, I feel, is going to have much more of that kind of a vibe at it. That there are people, so many people, 400 people, but 40 attendees or so. That's, you know, 10 people at a time potentially that could be in any store. And once again, there are going to be, oop, oh, no, 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 <laughs> going to be lulls. And, um, you know, some rooms will get crazy at certain times. And so it's, um, it'll have a little bit more of that frantic vibe to it, which I so enjoy. And it's like a feeding frenzy. Stitchers, when they get together at a needlework store, is a totally different feeling than a stitcher by herself at a needlework store. So, like, if you go to a needlework store by yourself, you know, you come in and you're like, hello. And, um, you know, they're like, can I help you? And you just kind of, no, I'm, I'm just looking, thank you. And it's very quiet. But if you get five or ten stitchers in a row in a needlework store batten down the hatches because some crazy stuff is going to happen. They're going to, they just, people tend to feed off of each other, you know, and it's like, oh my gosh, look what I found. I can't believe it. And everybody's like, oh my gosh, they have one for me. And it, there's lots of laughing and lots of gasping and talking, 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 and just excitement. And it's fun because neat work is fun. Colors are fun. Fabric is fun. Designs are fun. And sometimes it's like a treasure hunt because you may have been looking for something for a long time and all of a sudden you find it or there's something that you come across that's kind of cool that you'd never seen before. And so there's just that's just really cool. Are you so happy? This is Zero. That's This is Grumpy here. She's very sweet. I've got Ruby is here and Fitz is over there. Oop. I need to be able to see myself. It's weird. It's weird to talk to yourself in front of the computer. Um, it's filming me right now. But um, I guess how I am with you guys on the, like with Stitchy Tube, that's that's really authentically me. I feel. So 
So I'm hoping that I can do some shopping at the Galleria too. I, I um, offered to teach classes and Kathy asked me if I wanted to teach classes, but then she said, oh, I have enough. And I said, you know what? Keep me as backup. And if you have an emergency, because they happen, I said, just count on me to help you fix it. Because there are always just, there are things, things happen. And it's maybe not with, you know, the 40, 40 booths that are going to be there. There may not be a lot that happens. And there will be people who are going to attend the show that don't end up making it for another reason, for this reason or some other reason. But at, at Nashville Needlework Market, there's typically one or two or three booths that just never open because, you know, there was a death in the family or, you know, somebody got pneumonia or, you know, life just happens. And so, so those kind of things happen. There are people that cancel sort of last minute, you know, where it's like they cancel, but it's like two months in advance or, or a couple weeks in advance. And they try to fill those spots if they can. They always have a waiting list. The, uh, you know, talking about National Needlework Market, there, there are many fewer shops that go, but it's funny that there just are just as many booths. People, you know, people still want to go and 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 sell their products there, which I think is nice. Because it really is fun. And I'm just making orange stitches. I like filling in big areas or stuff, you know, like where you're just doing this and it's just, you don't even have to look at the pattern. It's kind of nice. I was working with this pattern last night and it's on, you know, it's on paper, paper, paper. And I was just having trouble getting it to, to rest here. And I was like, oh, I have a clipboard. So I have it on a clipboard, and then that way it's, it's a little more sturdy, and I can, you know, it's not flopping around. And I've got it all. It's, it's a page for every square. So there's 12 pages of charts. Each square is 90 by 90 or something like that. And then there's a whole fold-out chart that helps you with the placement. And it's just really great. I don't know why I waited so long to start this. It's really going to be pretty. And it's not necessarily fall, you know what I mean? But it's kind of got a fall vibe to it. And the colors I'm using so far, you know, like rust and green and gold. No browns yet. I like brown. I like different shades of brown. That's not a color like as a kid that, like if you have a kid, if you know a kid and you're like, what's your favorite color? You expect them to say what? Like pink, purple, blue, red, yellow. That's what you expect, right? No kids say orange, I feel. Maybe some do. My uncle Bill, orange was his favorite color. So he had lots of clothes that were orange. But I think if you have a kid and you're like, you're babysitting a kid and you're like, hey, what's your favorite color? And they say brown, watch out for that kid a weird kid. I mean, it's fine to like brown, but I don't think kids typically do. But I like brown. And I've been dying, you know, I'm dying all these linens for my store, and I'm having such a great time. There is at least a little brown in every color, because I like them to be, have that prim, dirty, dingy look. And so I dumb every color down a little bit with brown. I don't know though that I have a favorite color. I like color, I like colors. I like glossy threads, peaches. He is a mess. The cats don't, other cats don't like him. He's Harrison's cat. I, it's not really that they don't like him. They get annoyed by him. He's like the pesky little brother. He's very, very sweet, but he likes to come in and just get in everybody's business. We all know somebody like that, right? You're like, oh, here comes Barbara. Sorry, if your name's Barbara, I'm sure you're very sweet, but you're nothing but trouble. You are nothing but trouble, Barb. I'm just, I'm so enjoying being back in the industry um, I feel my creative juices turning back on, which is great. And my energy has been really good. But I need to take more time.
to not work. My work isn't strenuous necessarily. I mean, it can be, but it requires a lot of focus and I'm pretty much working all the time right now, but I enjoy it, but I shouldn't work all the time. I should take, take time not to not work sometimes too. But it's, um, I've really enjoyed working on my website and I love making videos. And I, <clears throat> I don't know what the sweet spot is <clears throat> as far as making videos. Like I can think video every day. I don't want to oversaturate the market with Teresa though. So I'll just make them once in a while. I thought it would, today it would be fun to make two back to back because I made a video yesterday. And I enjoyed that because I had a lot to share. But to this morning I got up and I thought, you know what? I'm going to shoot a, shoot a stitch with me video or a hang with me. I hope it feels like we're hanging out. Because like I said before, so, you know, you may have people in town that you hang out with, your town. But a lot of people, I think, stitch by themselves. And it's very relaxing and it can be fun too and rewarding and contemplative and you may watch your favorite movies and things but it's so much more fun to hang out with someone and be stitching people think sometimes when you're you're stitching and you're in their presence that you're not paying attention you know that's totally not true because they I think people who don't do it think oh my gosh that requires a lot of patience and it does but I think the better you get at anything the easier of a time you have, you know what I mean? So it's not, you don't really get, I don't get frustrated with my stitching very often. I get angry at threads sometimes if they get bunchy and knotty. And I get frustrated sometimes if I've made a mistake. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's always that moment where you're like, one, two, three, one, oh no. <sighs> and then you're like, okay, what do I do? Am I going to pull this out? How few of these stitches can I pull out? Do I have to pull them out? This was supposed to be brown and I just made it blue. Is that going to be noticeable? You go through the whole like stages of denial, grief, anger, bargaining, right? I usually just leave it in if I can. You know, like I've already made, I've already made mistakes on this. Like, um, the T in the word lieth here, I made it one stitch too tall, so it's taller than all the other letters. And I like that. I did it by accident because she made her T's. You know how, like, I don't know if, I love stitching alphabets, and so I can look at an alphabet and go, oh, yeah, yeah, I got it. I know I know how this alphabet's put together. And I, I don't refer to the pattern as often as I do with other things because I just am like, oh, yeah, I know how it goes. Well, the T... She made a little differently than usual, and so I put one extra stitch in it, thinking she had done it one way. But I leave it because I, I like that. I think it makes, it makes a certain authenticity. It tells who I am as a person. Sister Eugenia, I went to Catholic grade school. She was a sweet old nun, and I think she passed away recently. Very short lady, very, very sweet. And um, I remember in first grade, one of the first things she had us do this is this is hardcore now that I think about it one of the first things she had us do was take our brand new pencils that we just got for school and I still when I smell like a freshly sharpened pencil it takes me entirely back to first grade like that is the smell that I retained from that year and I time traveled to first grade but she we took our brand new pencils and she made us cut the erasers off of every pencil and throw them in the garbage. And the reason, <laughs> we also had to have red pencils. And if we made a mistake and we knew it, she wanted us to circle the mistake in red and then write and write what we were writing again. So she wanted us to, it's interesting, I mean, when you think of a, like a religious sister, like what is that? Maybe I'm reading too much into it. Is it that like you, when you recognize a mistake if you like if you wrong somebody or you sin or you you do something poorly or whatever it's almost like you have to confess 
that red circle was like a confession. Like, oh my gosh, I made a mistake. I acknowledge my mistake and I'm going to try again. But I don't know. It's probably one of those things that that's how she was taught. I don't know. There may be a lesson in that. There's a lesson in that, I think. It is important to... It's, it's a hard thing to do as, an, as a person to admit when you've made a mistake. Because we don't like to make mistakes, I think. As a species, we don't like to make mistakes. Nobody enjoys... I don't know. Well, I guess I, I enjoy that tea that I made the wrong way. But I mean, if you make a mistake as a person, you say something unkind or you, you know, step on somebody's foot or whatever. You don't enjoy that. You wish it had never happened. Our, our, we kind of want to like brush over it or, you know, pretend it never happened, hope nobody noticed. But I think when you, like a friend or a loved one, if you make a mistake, you do something to hurt their feelings, it's very good. I think both people feel better if you can say, oh my gosh, I am so sorry. That was, I didn't mean to say it that way. That sounded blah, blah, blah. Let me try again. That's better than like, a, oh, hey, look, <laughs> look over there. There's a bird. There's a squirrel. I'm learning to appreciate drinking water. I've never really liked drinking water, but I do, I would say I'm getting to like it. It's, um, it's good to drink water. We're made of water. A lot of water. Like 70% water or something like that. Our bones have water in them. I think that's really weird. I've never broken a bone that I know of. I may have, well, you know what? I bet I broke my toe a few times. Is there anything that makes you madder than when you stub your toe so hard? <laughs> You know what I mean? When you're like running with, because a pot's boiling over or you're, the laundry goes off and you, like the, like the couch, the leg of a couch and you just whap your, your toe. That is so angering. And hitting your head. That makes me so angry too when I hit my head. I have um, in my closet, Steve and I have a walk-in closet and you guys would laugh. I'm just not a typical woman. No, I'm not going to peg us all that way. I don't really, I'd rather buy stitching stuff or artsy things or books than clothes. I just don't care about clothes. I don't have a lot of shoes because I have bad feet. So my closet is pretty empty. There's not a lot in there and most of it honestly doesn't fit anymore. I'm hanging on to it because I am going to lose the weight because I like some of those things. But we have two bars. So there's like a bar that hangs and then everything can hang down. But then there's one part of it that's like bar and then a bar halfway down so you can like hang your shirts there. And I I historically have hung all my needlework threads there and you know, stuff like that. Whoop. I am gonna take that out. That was just one errant stitch. So sometimes I'll be that's where I, I kept my craft supplies up until I moved into the hitching post here. And once in a while I'd be down digging something out and I'd stand up underneath that bar and just whack my head. And it, I would feel like Hulk smash, like Hulk, ugh, like, you know, like Hulk gets so angry and he turns into a monster, like a green monster. That's what I feel like when I whack my head. It creates some kind of primal lizard brain rage. And then you go, oh, and you get that bump on your head. That hurts. I probably need a helmet. I don't whack my head that often. I don't want y'all to think I just spend all day get whacking my head because I don't. Kind of I'm digging stitch in these boxes. I was wondering how I was going to do this if I had to pay attention to my chart, but I really don't. I'm working around it by just stitching, stitching orange, stitching orange. I like Gloriana silks and thread gatherer silks. I am. I ordered a whole crap ton, like an official crap ton of threads from CC at the thread gatherer. Oh no, where did I go? Oh, there it is. Um, 
she's so sweet. She's very, she's very, very sweet. And I think sometimes, um, I think she's in a way she's kind of bashful. She's very soft spoken and she's um, serious, but she's very like genuinely sweet. And sometimes I think we need to be respectful of the way other people, you know, cause I think sometimes people look at somebody who's maybe very quiet and say, oh, that person's stuck up or that person is antisocial. That person is nice. Like let someone be nice and quiet and quiet. Like you don't have to be, you don't have to be, you know, the life of the party to be considered a nice person. She's very, very sweet and talented and her threads are so lovely. She's on, I'll put a link below to her too. She has an Etsy shop. So if you're looking for thread gatherer threads, you can order them through her Etsy shop or her brand new website, which I was talking to her about. She said she'd like to be in the zine after the first of the year, so she's gonna get an interview and some, we're working on something. But where was I going with that? Oh, so I ordered a whole bunch of silks from her. And um, oh man, her silks are one of those things that, and I feel like this way with Gloriana too, that when you see them in person, and it's just like the fabric, you're like, oh, so beautiful. She makes uh, waxers too, that are really neat with old Springerly molds, the German, German molds that they used to use for like butter and cookies, I think, and butter cookies. I wonder what people from like the 1500s would think if they ate some of our food that we eat these days. You know, I think we would think their food was really bland and not nearly sweet enough, and they probably would just gag on what we eat. It's all what you're used to, right? I uh, I don't know how I got to looking at it, but um, it's really fun to look around on the internet and just learn things. And somehow I came across some tin types. Um, what are they called? Daguerreotypes. You know, the old kind of photography. And um, because I was thinking about them because Kathy Barrick has, I think, a couple of little pieces where she finished a little sampler and then she mounted it inside a daguerreotype frame. So daguerreotypes are photography. It's photography. It's an old fashioned, like 1800s photography technique. And there's a guy in Hattiesburg, I think, that does tin types or something. But anyway, they're really cool. And they would get their picture made and it was a huge deal to get your picture made because it was expensive. And so they, and they would always be like, cause you would have to hold it for a while, you know, cause they, they had to expose it for long enough. But then you would present this to a loved one and it came in a tiny little book with like a little brass mat or a little gold, gold mat, um, that was hard. And, and so it was a little frame in a, in a little booklet with like a tooled leather cover or fabric or whatever. And, and so Kathy finished, because you can, you can buy just the frames sometimes on eBay or other places and uh, in differing sta states of repair. So I was looking at um, daguerreotypes on eBay just because it's fun to look. It's, it's like browsing the, you know, if the world had a, an antique store or a thrift store or whatever, that's, you can, you've got it all at your fingertips. But I found this really cool store, and I'll see if I remember to put a link to his site too. And he's a collector of these old photographs. And oh my gosh, did he have some beautiful ones. It makes you, looking at stuff like that, you're like, oh, I wanna collect those. It would be fun to have one, I think. And he has some really lovely ones. And it's funny too to see, his ranged anywhere from $40 to like $1,800. And he's a, an expert and he seems very sweet. I subscribed to his store right away because I thought he just did a really good job of describing what you were buying. And um, so I, it was funny because uh, some of the ones of his that were cheaper were the ones that I liked the best. I guess I like ragamuffins, huh? I like things that are old and beat up. Nope, I disappeared again. Zero, are you done sitting on my lap? He says, I get sick of, sick of listening to you talk, silly woman. Zero is about 
let's see, five, six, maybe seven and a half years old now. He was so cute. But he's he's just kind of a weird cat. He's put together in weird ways. He's got like his head isn't quite symmetrical, I don't feel like it is. And then um, he's got a foot. One of his back feet is like, he has one toe that's really short and then a really long one. And it kind of, the pad of his foot kind of points in the wrong direction. But he really is such a sweet pea. I don't think of him as a very smart cat. But I think he's savvy. Like he's got street smarts. He's got alley smarts. That's what a cat has. And um, he got outside once. I, we don't let the cats go outside because our neighborhood is full of roaming dogs. Hattiesburg doesn't really have, well, when we're not even really in Hattiesburg. There aren't leash laws here. So some people let their dogs just kind of roam the neighborhoods, which I don't mind. I like animals. And if somebody poops in my lawn, I'm glad it's a dog and not a person. And you know, even if a person pooped in my lawn, that's a good story. But anyway, he got outside once and I found him on the deck and he had just caught a bird and he was eating it. And I've never seen a cat eat a bird before, but he like ate it head first and just like ate the whole bird like in one big bite. I don't know what I expected. I don't know. I don't know. Like, they, do they do a cat barbecue? I thought. I guess I thought for some reason they'd eat it like a lion eats a gazelle or whatever that you take bites off of it. But I guess not. So I think he'd do okay. <clears throat> zero zero. So this afternoon I'm going to go to Jen's. I think. I think she's buzzed me here a few times since I sat down. We're going to make our plans to go to the Midwest Cross Stitchers Retreat in October. I've got a really busy couple months here. I don't like to travel. I don't like to travel. I like to be places. Um, here's what I don't like. I don't like to think about traveling. <laughs> like, I don't like the whole before part. So I don't like buying airline tickets. I feel like it's so stressful. I don't like having to like organize like who's going to watch the cats if i typically if i have left in my lifetime with my family i go grocery shopping so they've got lots of stuff to eat while i'm gone i try to leave the house real clean and you know you're buying tickets and you're packing and you're thinking about what you got to take and organizing all of that and that's the part i don't like and i also don't like to think about not being home I'm, kind, I'm really a homebody, and I seriously could be home every single day and be totally happy. I don't get bored. I like stitching, and I like reading, and I just don't get bored. And home just feels safe to me. But I like, like, if I go to a retreat, I like being at the retreat. And if I'm flying, I like being at the airport. It's fun to people watch and, you know, get a cup of coffee and... I always take my needlework or a book. Every trip I take a book and I usually get it read on my trip on the planes and while I'm waiting and just at nighttime. And I read Confederacy of Dunces this last trip. But so anyway, I've got the needlework show coming up, the Galleria show. That's gonna be um, a 10 hour drive. So we're gonna do it in chunks on the way there, but we'll do it all in one day on the way back. And I'm gonna rent a vehicle with more room. I've got a Nissan Rogue, which I can flip the seats down, but I have to take a lot of stuff and I just think it's not going to be enough room. Not nearly. Um, one time when I went, I took a, I rented a cargo van, but that's just too big. I don't have the shop displays like I used to have. I used to take spinner racks and everything. I mean, it was cool. So I've got that coming up in a couple weeks. And then the first week of October, I'm going to go back to Seattle and visit my sister for a day, but then I'm going to watch her four boys for a week. She and her husband are going to Monte Carlo. He won a trip um, through work. He works for Microsoft out in Seattle. And so I was just in Seattle, but, you know, they won this trip, and my sister also doesn't like to travel. She didn't, doesn't, I don't think she likes leaving her kids very much. Who does? 
but it's nice that they're going to get some time together. So I offered to come out and watch her kids. They were going to divvy them up between different people and like have two kids go here and two kids go here and they were going to be switching homes every couple days. And I said, you know what? I can just go. I can take, I can do designing while I'm out there. I can take my laptop. I can answer my emails. I can, you know, do things on my website. I can work on the zine. If I can just, um, you know, have somebody maybe pack orders here at home, it'll be like I'm, I'm here anyway. And so it'll be fun to get to know my nephews. But I've got that the first week of October. And then later in October, a couple weeks after that, I've got the Midwest Cross Stitchers Retreat. And so I've got a lot of travel coming up, which is, it's fine. It's good for me, I suppose. It's good to, good to get out. So I've got plane tickets to buy. They already bought my ticket to Seattle, but Jen and I have to come up with our tickets to uh, Minneapolis. And then we're going to rent a car. That's going to be fun. The, Mid the Midwest Stitchers Retreat is 75 uh, attendees, 75 people. And... Um, that's going to be really fun. i got to figure out what all I have to take because I think we're doing exchanges and things. And if I have to make a little ornament or something, i got to figure out what I'm doing with that. I love doing the retreat exchanges. It's fun to see what people make. And it's, it's fun to get little needleworky gifts. I think, you know, we as stitchers, we often make needlework gifts for people that we love or whatever. But... Um, it's, we don't often get a lot of needlework gifts ourselves because, you know, we may not know a lot of, unless you have stitchy friends. And so I think stitchers or artists or craftspeople in general, I think, give a lot of homemade things, but they may not get homemade things. Handmade things, I should say. And so it's fun to go to a retreat and have it in exchange where you, you know, get an ornament or a fob or whatever. Because you just, I think when you make them, you seriously appreciate the time that goes into making something like that. And it's such a joy. Uh, it not only to, to get, but to give. It's fun to, to make something for someone and see the recognition in their eyes when they open it up. Like, you know, how delighted they are to see the beauty of what it was or what it is. But then also to know that you you know, we're thinking of them. You made something in, with them in mind and that you're giving them a piece of your time. Because what do we have these days that's more valuable than time? You know, I guess our health is valuable and our loved ones are valuable. But that all equates to time that we've got. There's never enough time. Ben Franklin, I think, used to sleep like four hours a night or something like that. Well, who was it? Ben Franklin or Thomas Jefferson? Would like sleep for four hours and then like take two 15 minute naps or something and found that he could function perfectly fine with that. That's how I remember it anyway. That's crazy talk. Sleeping is wonderful. But just imagine if we didn't have to sleep. We'd be so tired though. But um, we could get so much done. Well, I'm going to keep stitching. I just got to the end of this thread, and I'm enjoying talking to you, but I think an hour is long enough to listen to me blather. I hope you enjoyed this format. I guess give me some feedback. I know some of you said you really like Stitch With Me videos, and some, a couple people said I hate them. I don't like, or I don't like them. It's not my favorite. That's what I liked, how I like to say it. Um, but I guess I wanted this to feel more like, like you were coming over and we were sitting and stitching together, and you could see my face. Because it's such a beautiful face. But I got quite a bit done. I did some, uh, here I'll show you. Let me finish off this thread. I, my backs are always messy, ladies and gentlemen. 1% of the people that watch my videos are gentlemen. Hello, gentlemen. <laughs> Old habits die hard. My little tails go on the floor. Zero. You're so nice. So here's... Here's how far I got. The um, square. And I only went part way with that square because I, I don't want to count it over. Usually what I do is I start filling it in. And then I'll, um, you know, 
finish the edge, but that's given me a good place to, and I also did down here, started the next line down. There's just one space in between each square. I'm gonna show you what the next square is. It's, um, one of the things I like to do is not, uh, not really look too much at the picture of a chart that I'm working on once I've started it, because I like surprises. And so uh, when I look at, when you look at this and it's just a black and white chart, you don't know like what color things are going to be. And so like there were little fish in the stream here. And so you look at the symbol, you're like, oh, it's a yellow fish. Small pleasures, right? That's okay. So the next part is the, the Reverend Isaiah Cook at St. Peter's Church. And, oh gosh, isn't that cute? Hang on, I'll show it to you. I just want to look at the, I have the chart. Well, well, there it is. Okay. Uh, oh, how, how cute. I learned after the village was stitched that Isaiah is actually spelled Isaiah. I apologize for this error. Unfortunately, I can't change it at this point. I like it misspelled. I like, I like mistakes like that. I think that's delightful. Yeah, she spelled it I-S-I-A-H. So the next part is here, St. Peter's Church with the Reverend Isaiah Cook. And I think the change that I'm gonna make to that is it's got stained glass windows. And I feel like that's a little country church and they couldn't afford the stained glass. So I'm gonna make panes, I think, panes of glass and um, fill them in with, you know, like gray or something to just signify windows because I want it to be a meager church. St. Peter's Church. My brother's name is Peter. Peter Michael. Peter Michael Andreski, PMA are his initials, which is, we say stood for positive mental attitude. So I don't, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to stitching this. The, the two, I would say the two squares I like the best are this Hawk Run Hollow City Hall. I love a big old building like that. Can you see it? And then I love this mill right there. I think this one is really neatly balanced with the verses going through. I'll read it to you and then we'll close. So it says, over the river on a hill lieth a village sweet and still. All around it, the forest and the trees shiver and whisper in the breeze. Over it, sailing shadows go of soaring hawk and screaming crow. And mountain grasses low and sweet grow in the middle of every street and then they've got so they've got st peter's church with the reverend isaiah cook hawk run hollow city hall established 1727 opal's boarding house nathan huffer blacksmith jacob's grist mill apple orchard farm hawk run schoolhouse oh and they've got little jump rope girls and a little boy on a swing and a kite that's cute and then the old burial ground so um, it was fun hanging out with you today. Come over anytime. Um, if I get a positive reception to this, I may do more in the future. We'll see. I just kind of felt like shooting it this morning, and it's good to be spontaneous. I hope you guys have a really great weekend. Get some stitching done. Bye-bye.